Good afternoon. Happy Easter Wednesday. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, we gather again here in this sacred space to lift up your name, to glorify your name, and to thank you for all that you have done for us. Most of all, we thank you for what you have done for us through the life and work of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, whose coming into the world we just celebrated. And thanks be unto your Lord, the glorious day with its brightness, with its sunshine and hope, still fills our heart today. And so we give thanks to you for Jesus Christ. We give you thanks for the church that carries on, that continues to lift up his name, even in these dark times. And now, Lord, we pray that you would bless our gathering here today to study your word. The word is printed in the book. Only point to the word made flesh in Jesus Christ. Thanks be unto you, O Lord. Thanks be unto you. Amen. I don't know about you, but I'm still on a high, a spiritual high, from our celebration of Easter here in this place. I'm still on a high because of the sermon when it was still dark. It was one of those sermons that stays with you and reminds you, that reminds us who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, that no matter how dark the hour, we do not need to despair for morning will surely come. Can I hear and have me into that? Now, one of the things I want to focus on today, specifically, which still makes me uh, want to jump up and shout, is the ministry of our children on Easter Sunday. I visited a lot of churches here and there, and in many of the churches that I visit from time to time and have visited for a long time, I see nobody there on the 30. And what that means, it seems to me, is that the church as we have known it, as I have known it, surely is in decline in terms of numbers. But when I saw all of those children just kept coming, kept coming, I wanted to jump up and shout because I said the church is alive and well, here, here, at Greater Second Mount Olive Baptist Church. And the reason for that is because of the inspiration of Pastor Hurd. 
It is because of his vision and the execution of his vision. To be all things to all people. I don't know whether you noticed it or not, but Pastor Hurd takes special attention, pays special attention to the children of the church. And what is even just as great is that the parents of this church know how important it is to train up a child in the way the child should go. And uh, I want everybody here to give, 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 give a hand of pra praise. Praise to the parents. <laughs> For that program to come off as well as it did, we got some good, God-fearing, God-caring, loving parents in this church. And all of the parents in the church do not have biological children. A lot of the parents in the church don't have any children in the church. But they are doing the work of parenting. And that's one of the missions of the church is to parent the children. I'm going to get back to the scripture in a minute, but I have a, a little poem that I put together. And it's going to appear in my book if I ever get it finished. And it goes like this. And I'm taking the role of the newborn child. And were you impressed by the dedication uh, on the Sunday of the children I was? And that inspired me to pull out of my files this little poem, this little poetic, whatever you want to call it. But anyway, here's the way it goes. And I'm speaking as the newborn child. It says, hello, father. Hello, mother. Hello, Nana. Hello, Papa. Hello, Uncle. Hello, Auntie. Hello, everyone. Well, here I am, John or Mary. I have come into your world by virtue of God's grace and the beckoning of your love. I am yours. I belong to you. From the top of my head to the bottom of my feet, I am yours totally and completely yours. This is the newborn child speaking to all of us. The newborn child is speaking to us as parents, as guardians, as members of the church. The newborn child is speaking to us as members of organizations. Remember, the newborn child is speaking to us as elected officials in the church, 
in the city and in the county. The newborn child is saying to us, I am yours, totally and completely yours. I am your blood, your bone, and your flesh. Therefore, my prayer is that you teach me by precept and example all that I need to know so that I may grow up to be a blessing to the Lord, to you, to the community, and to the world. And as you prepare to teach me, this is key, pay attention. As you prepare to teach me, remember that I learn more from what you do than what you say. In other words, in other words, I would rather see a sermon than to hear one. Amen? Amen? I would rather see a sermon than to hear one. I am yours. I am yours. Even for my life, I'm solely dependent upon you. But, but, only for the seasons of my infancy, my childhood and youth am I so dependent upon you. Only then are our lives so intertwined, intertwined and connected. On the other hand, after all has been said and done, I'm separate and apart from you. I'm unique in the universe, as unique as Twin Peaks on a mountain in the Rockies, as separate as flakes in a snowball. As in the game of chance, so also in the proper rearing of a child. It is vitally important for participants to know when to hold and when to let go. You may share with me your dreams and your hopes but don't impose them upon me. I got to be who I am, who God called me to be. So help me, therefore, learn what I need to learn in Sunday school, in church, in Bible study, and by the example you set before me. To be my best self, to be the person that God called me to be. You must let me be what God called me to be. And I believe that everyone who God ushers 
through the dangers of the birthing process had been chosen by God to perform some duty like no other, better than no other, if for nothing more than to be the best school teacher or the best social worker or to be the best deacon or the deaconess, whatever God has called me to be. That is what I will be. With your guidance, with your prayers, and with your patience. Remember, I'm but a child. I know nothing save what I have learned from you. The Bible says, train a child. How do you train a child? You train the child by taking the child by his or her hand and lead them in the places that they need to go to be enriched spiritually, to be learned in school by dedicated teachers. I remember years and years ago, you wouldn't see, hardly ever see children in church without their parents. But today, too many parents will send their children to church, to Sunday school, and all things related to religious training. And they will stay at home. This has to change. I don't know how, but as I said, children learn more from what they see us doing than what they what we tell them to do. And I want to make a special appeal to you, to the daddies in this congregation, to the fathers in the congregation, and to those who may be listening virtually. Your role as a parent cannot be replaced by a PlayStation, or any other kind of gadget or gadget that you place in the home while you are out in the streets doing whatever it is you're doing. Our future depends upon it. Our future is dark if we do not bring up our children with a reverence for God, the maker and creator of all things and all the people of the earth. How many weekends have you lived in recent times when you did not hear of violence in the streets of our cities, in the streets of our own city, horrible crimes. And the majority of the crimes the majority 
perpetrated by young folk, by people who have not been nurtured in the faith that Jesus Christ is Lord and that there is someone above even mama and daddy. What I tried to do for my children, and I'm sure you tried to do the same thing, but we just have to keep trying. And we have to keep taking responsibility for other folks' children. One of the members of the church told me uh, he was uh, driving down the road and he saw this young fella. He was just leaving church. And he picked it up and gave this young person a ride. And he thought he was dressed a little too casually to be, uh, have gone, gone to church. And he started talking to him about, why do you go to church? I don't go to church. And he was a little, little, little bit taken aback, but not, not necessarily because there are so many kids around this church and around every church who do not go to church and have nobody to encourage them to go. So he did like I do. Everybody I meet, I invite to come over and, and to share that all of experience, children. But the point is that I'm trying to say is we really have to get serious about bringing up the children. Uh, there is a, an old saying that comes out of our uh, African background. And this is what it says. It takes what a village to raise a child. And it does. Now, I'm going to tell you how old I am, because you already know. <laughs> but I grew up at a time when every adult was my parent. And if I misbehaved because I thought mama and papa was not looking, then I got a real surprise when I got home. Now, he said, well, if you speak to one of the, one of the young folk out there, they'll cut you off, I'll cut you off. You know, since I have been here in this church, I saw a gr group of young men, we were going to dinner at one of the restaurants. And it was a bunch of them, you know, and I went over and said hello. And they looked at me up and down and, and they say, hello, Pops. Now I said, OK. Hello. So I started a conversation with them. I was not afraid to speak to these other men. So I told them about the church. I, I, as a matter of fact, they said they were coming to church. So I looked for them. Of course, they didn't come. But the point I'm trying to say, the point I'm trying to make, is let's don't give up on our children. Let's don't give up on our children. That is a requirement for those of us who know the Lord. It is a comfort of us who know that God May not come every time you call his name, but God will come in due time. That, that, that's why our children, our precious children, 
must be rescued from the clutches of those who exploit them. And we need to start early because the earlier we start, the easier it is. Uh, I'll tell you this wooden story about my relationship with my son. I think I told the church that I have one of my children, my, one of my daughters will be here at church Sunday. And uh, my daughter was a little bit rebellious. And she was gonna, I was, I was one of those strict kind of daddies. Uh, no dating one-on-one -on -one until 16. And uh, daddy, all the other girls, 40, 50 years, they got boyfriend. I said, well, you can have a boyfriend, but you didn't have to bring him home. And if you're going out, you gotta go out double dating. I had these rules. Oh, you're so, you're so, so out of touch with you. you you're too old, <laughs> you know, whatever. Anyway, I, I stuck to my guns. And uh, finally she said to me one day, she says, no daddy, uh, I'm so glad that you said no. You said no because so many of my contemporaries, they have fallen victim to all kinds of things. But, but all I'm trying to say, don't give up on the children. I, I haven't given up on my son and he's 60 something. But uh, the important thing is do your best. Encourage your children in the neighborhood. Uh, come and uh, come to something special. Uh, sometimes you invite them to something unrelated to the church, and you, you got to use all means so that by what Paul said, by some means, you will win some to the cause. There's a lot of work to be done in in our community to reclaim our children so that we will, well, I guess by now we've stopped being shocked by what they do with their guns and the reasons they do what they do with their guns. Somebody insults them. Well, I'm insulted every day so in some way, but I can't, you got to learn how let go and let God and that's what we need to tell our children we need to let tell our children that they must obey the law of the state even when it's unjust so that they will live to see the day when the law is changed. I know many times I could have gotten my brains blown out because I was subjected to a law that only applied to me. But something in my head said, if you don't lose your cool, you're gonna get over it. And one day you'll be in a position to help change the darn law. Here's what my 
my daddy told me. It took me a long time to understand what he was saying. He said, this is what he said to all of us boys growing up in Ku Klux Klan territory. Don't get in a fight that you don't have any chance of winning. Not now. And he had this way of saying, using colorful language. He said, when you get in a fight that you can't win, you're only making the frog fat for the snake to eat it. So there are times when we just have to take time with our children. My, one of my children came and said, well, the teacher doesn't like me. I said, well, what did you do to make the teacher not like you? Well, I really didn't do anything. I said, oh, I know teachers. Teachers teach because they like their children. They love their children. I know teachers because I've had some of the toughest teachers, but they were tough on me because they loved me and they knew I had to get something in my head in order to make it through life. So I stood up for the teacher. And one of them in particular was the one of his son. She now runs a corporation because I took the side of the teacher. So what am I saying? Train up a child in the way that he or she should go. And when they're old, they will not depart from it. Now that's not always true. Not always true. But even Jesus could not save all of the disciples that walked with him and talked with him and slept with him and shared life with him. He couldn't save them all. But I promise you, my brothers and sisters in the faith, if we train our children, and all the children in the neighborhood belong to you and me, and Pastor Hood understands that, and you here at this church understand that, I've come to know about the volunteering you do. I've come to know about all of the extra effort that goes into reaching out, bringing the children in the community into an involvement in the church. This is what the church is supposed to be doing in order to train all of the children. And maybe I was impressed Sunday by the children ministry. They had, they had a little bit of everything for everybody, including a little rap. Did you, did you get it? Did you get it? I said, wow. I hope this service was, I know it was out on, you know, the meeting, but I hope so many young folk who say things like, well, well, daddy, I, I don't want to go to the church. Those old folks, they ain't, they ain't got nothing for me. The, the church is supposed to have something for everybody. And we do, we do, we do, we do here have something for everybody. And especially for our youth. Train a child in the way that he or she 
should go. And when he or she's old, one of my uh, seminary professors uh, was a uh, um, um, I forgot now, he was from one of those Scandinavian countries. Nils Foray was his name. <clears throat> and this was back in the in the 40s or 50s when um, one of the uh, expressions used to describe the behavior of children back uh, then was uh, child delinquency. Uh, it was not child criminality. It was cr they they went from being delinquent to being criminals. Now we they 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 you know. But anyway, here's what he said. Sorry, he said. Uh, um, he said my daddy impressed upon us boys that there were certain things that we must never do. And uh, he was from one of those, those the name of the country skip, slips my memory right now, but anyway, one of those stern, stern, uh, where men were, were they, they, they roared, so to speak. But anyway, here's what he said his father told, he had, he had a bunch of brothers, and in the church that they grew up in, uh, they prescribed all the things you can do and all the things you couldn't do. And one of the, one of the things they had a prescription against was smoking. No smoking. And to demonstrate what his father told him, he, he put his lecture down and he said, my father had us boys in a father, son, he said, if I ever catch you smoking, he said, I will wring your necks like your mama rings the neck of a chicken. Now, <laughs> but the point is, he said, we believed it and none of us ever smoked. Sometimes, you have to put a little fear. That's, that's, a little reverence. Uh, tell this story. Uh, this young lady told me of she was her daddy's girl, uh, and uh, one day she and her mother got into some kind of dispute, and uh, she was giving her mother a, a piece of her mind. And she said, it's, my daddy was in another room. And when he heard what was going on, he came in the room. And I thought he was gonna take my side because I think I was right. But this daddy that I, that, that I know loved me, I, I, I was his girl. And he grabbed me and, and shook me a little bit. Said, baby girl, if you, I ever catch you talking to your mama like that, I will. We must bring up the child in the way that he or she must go. Otherwise, we don't have a future. I heard a report the other day 
That said, more and more, America is losing members of all churches, but particularly those churches that have been around for a long time, the traditional churches. Now, there are a few mega churches that are still growing, you know, non-denomination. But we must find a way to bring out young people back. And I don't mean fads and, you know, I don't mean doing some of the stuff to some of these, I, that, that's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is we need to begin to train our children at an early enough age so they will fall in love with the church and the folk in the church. That's what happened to me. I, I, I think I told the senior the first time I had an opportunity to speak that my first ever recollection of being alive anywhere. I was in a clapboard church in Worth County, kind of Warwick Oakfield in that area. And I, 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 was, I was helped to pull out this memory. I must have been one or two. It may have been three. I was, grew up skinny, skin and bones. But I remember it well. It was cold, and there was a pot belly stove. And they had a way of moving over so that the last person to come into church, come out of the cold into the church, they automatically move over to the next seat. And I remember it well. This day, when my mama came into church with me in her arms, wrapped around me was a handmade quilt. It had been handed down. I was the last. I don't know how long, <laughs> how many of uh, my siblings, I'm the last of 13. But, but my mother's arms wrapped around this quilt. So you may, you may say that, that I was practically born in the church. I became alive in the church, that's why the church is so important to me. And that's why it's so important to you. The church has nurtured me. The church has given me ground on which to stand when I was seeking it's because of of the nurturing I received in the church as a child. So let us be aware of how important it is to bring up children with a consciousness of God the final authority is not mama papa the final authority is God in my last church um, one of my members um, had, had just retired and 
got a lump sum of money or something, I guess. But she showed up in a new car <laughs> and a new bumper sticker. And this is what the bumper sticker said. The bumper sticker said, if God said it, I believe it, and that's it. In other words, don't bother me with anything else. If God said it, I believe it, and that's it. And what did God say? I, I am who I am. What did God say? He said, don't worry about my name. That's what he was saying to Pharaoh. Concern yourself with what I can do. Concern yourself with the fact that I am the one that called into being all that is from nothing. Consider that. God first. Instill that into our children. And they will grow up to bless us. They may go away, but they will come home. They may, may make a mistake. They may mess up, but they'll clean up their messes, or they will allow you to help them to clean up the mess. If you train the child in a way, the child should go. But don't insist upon doing the same things in the same way with negative effects. I know some people say, well, I don't want no drum, no guitar, no this, no that. But Whatever we need to meet people, all people, at their points of need. I need you to recognize my talents, whatever it is. And that's what pastor tries to do here. No, that's not what he tries to do. That's what the pastor does. He let young folk take part. Let, 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 let the young folks sing their own songs. That was a beautiful rap. There are not too many Baptist church that would allow somebody to rap. Pastor Hood, right way ahead. Bring them in. Take their art. If they can dance, let them dance. In the church. In the church. David danced before the Lord. Because he was happy. I feel like this sometimes. I do. I mean, when you see me holding myself like, I'm trying, I, I can't. My, my knees are, are, are too wobbly to be shouting, but sometimes I feel like it. And because I've been trained as a child to love God with all my heart, with all of my mind, and with all my strength, that's why I got as much education as I could get, and I'm still going to school. <laughs> at 95. When you know the Lord, you ain't scared of nobody. And uh, my, my, my baby girl daughters always tell me, 
Yeah, you ain't got no business being out and going. You know, not even going to church. On, uh, what are you talking about? I'm not gonna stop living because there's some bad guys out there in the street. First of all, I know God is is watching over me because He still got something for me to do. Otherwise, He would have called me home a long time ago because He knows I'm tired, but I ain't that tired. I'm going to keep on keeping on. Because the Lord has been good to me. So, let's find new ways of attracting the children. One of the things I did when I was overseas, um, and to take children to the chapel, I started a drama club. And one of the plays that I have in my toolbox is a play called. Uh, the challenge of the cross. And uh, a lot of the kids who participated in the play had never been, had never come to the chapel before. But I had them to make, uh, that's what the play called for. I didn't, I was not that creative. But I had them to make crosses of all sizes well, that's what the play called for. Make crosses of styrofoam. And some of them were huge crosses, and, and they were coming in, falling down, carrying the cross. But, 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 the, but the idea was is to give the non-participants reason to get involved. And some of those folk that got involved in my drama club were still going to the chapel when I left. So there's a lot of creative people in this church. And it was on display this past Easter. And I want to say, keep on keeping on. For you are on your way, and you're going to take a whole lot of young folk along to take your place. That's what the church is here for. We cannot allow the church. to become irrelevant. And what I believe is this. When you train the child in the way that he should go, if he becomes a lawyer, he will be an honest lawyer. He will not, or she will not, take money from the client. If you train the child in the way that the child should go. If they teach school, they will teach school. As if every child is her own or his own. They will let that child know that he or she is loved. So many children come to school. They haven't had anything to eat. But it is the church who feeds the children. 
that speaks well for the church to come because the child will remember. The child will remember. Um, you're, you're, you're a great church. You are great people because you are God's choice. God has chosen you. God beckoned and you came. He beckons all of us, but some of us don't come. I believe that uh, I'm going to sing a song. <laughs> I can't sing, but I always like to try. Somebody is knocking at your door. Somebody is knocking at your door. Somebody is knocking, and it sounds like Jesus. Somebody knocking at your door. Somebody knocking at your door. Somebody is knocking at your door. Oh, it sounds like Jesus. Why don't you answer him? Somebody is knocking at your door. He is knocking at every door of the heart of all of us. And he's knocking to tell us, stay involved in training the children in this community in the way that they should go. And when they are old, they will not depart from it. I love you. We love each other. The pastor loves us. God loves us. So we're okay. We're okay. Be blessed. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for this day, for this time to share. Now we pray that you would bless the food that has been prepared to nourish our bodies. Bless this and the food and all else to our use and us to your service. We pray now and always. Amen.